Hi guys, hello everyone. Welcome to free technical talk organizing by our APU Asia Pacific University, Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Today the talk is going to about demystifying the data science on artificial intelligence. We're glad to inform you that our young professional, expatriate and well experienced person who is from Exaltius, Exaltius, Singapore, the CTO and co-founder is Mr. A.M. Aditya. So he is going to deliver the information about the knowledge sharing about the demystifying data science and artificial intelligence. Before we invite him, I would like to share some of the information about his past experience. Mr. Aditya is a technical enthusiast with more than eight years of experience across various technologies, especially in data science, machine learning, deep learning, and computer vision. He has completed his master's in data science from the National University of Singapore. Being highly inclined towards technology, Mr. Aditya founded Xaltius Private Limited in Singapore which has a major focus on building solutions in data science, also artificial and educating students and professionals in the same areas. Over the past five years, he had conducted over 200 trainings, also workshops, and had trained over 3,000 people in the areas of data analytics, machine learning, deep learning, Python, and other across the Southeast Asian region. And last but not least, Mr. Haditya has trained corporate and also retail and academic clients across various domains, including automotive, banking, finance, retail and logistics, among others. He is a true believer of you got to see it work to know it works and set goals towards achieving the same in any of the endeavors he undertakes. Apart from the work, he loves to engage with the kids and get involved in social work. Once again, we would like to invite the prominent and also the most young professional, Mr. Aditya, to deliver the talk on demystifying data science and artificial intelligence. Welcome, Mr. Aditya. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mabati. So good afternoon to everybody here. Uh, and good afternoon to the panel uh, and everybody who's joined in from uh, different countries, different universities, and APU. Uh, I'm going to start sharing my screen and and talk about uh, you know what's going to happen today. So just give me a moment while I try to do that. Yes. All right. Uh, great. So, uh, you know, as Mr. Mapati was saying and rightly pointed out, today's focus is majorly going to be on two big buzzwords in the industry: right? data science and artificial intelligence. Right. So, we've been hearing a lot of these terms. We've been seeing. A lot of things happening around us using these technologies today and i'm going to try to open the box for you to tell you what this is all about what actually lies you know behind the scenes of data science and ai so i'm happy to take this on today and and bring you you know through this uh, journey of what data science and ai is all about i don't need to introduce myself again uh, i think mr Mapati has you know, already done that. So my name is Aditya, and uh, I have a lot of experience in this field. Uh, and I love to talk to people. I love to train people. And I love the the field in general because it's very very exciting, and there are new things coming up every single day. So what am I going to take you through today? I'm going to make you know a statement on how and what data science is all about, how it is revolutionizing you know, the industry today. How did data science grow over the past 30, 40 years? Why you know, is data science 
so much you know on in the limelight today that i'm going to open the box tell you what happens behind the scenes how easy or how difficult is it it is to do things then we move on to what ai is all about what artificial intelligence entails what does it contain what happens there and then we talk about how you can you know engage yourself in some of these things where do you see some of these real world examples right that's going to be the major focus of my talk today now term data science and ai was created because of one major factor which started exploding over the past 10 to 20 years and that is data right without data the term data science artificial intelligence would not exist so today on a daily basis we are generating over 2 and a half quintillion bytes of data now if i put that into perspective for all of you now imagine you have dvds or cd roms and you have multiple warehouses filled with them and that would probably not even be close to this number right now if you look at things in real time because data is coming in from all around us every second that passes by you will see data coming in from various different sources be it social media be it you know news channels be it this video feed that we are broadcasting on everything is contributing to the immense amount of data which is being generated and you can see those numbers changing very very rapidly now what is data that's where the basis of data science is from data is something which you know you can see in a quantitative or qualitative manner see and use rather right this conversation i'm having with you your excel table the newspaper you read or the news articles you see the social media channels you browse everything is contributing to what we call data today and because of this there is a massive explosion of of data that is you know, revolutionizing the industry and that is why you would often hear this particular phrase or saying the data is a new oil why do you hear this you know when oil was first discovered in a very unrefined form it was not usable at all and we all know that we can't put oil into our car and expect it to run we need to have fuel in the form of either petrol or diesel or gas and that's how our vehicles run so data you know behaves the same way when we collect it from social media or when i collect it from let's say this live broadcast i can't directly make use of it in its raw form i have to refine it through various methods i have to drive it through various tools in order to make it usable so that i can derive some value from it and this process of getting it through this refinery is called data science so the science behind refining the data is what we are going to see now data science you know is a term which came into existence a few years back right it entails a lot of things it behind the scenes it, it actually involves things like analysis things like algorithms business processes programming knowledge business domain expertise and together when we kind of put all this that's when data science is formed now in very very simple terms if we talk about how you are going to benefit from data science how an industry professional is going to benefit from data science the way they would benefit is that it would help their decision making capability to be much stronger because data science is the science that helps you make data driven decisions very simply put now let's talk about when the growth started and why was there a significant growth in this area of data science and analytics and that will give you a sense of you know where we are at today let's start by talking about explosion in data volume first now over the past decade or so 
we have grown almost 10 times in the amount of data we produce and consume on a day-to-day -day basis, on a yearly basis, right? So this data volume has exploded because of the amount of people using technology, because of the amount of people embracing the advances in technology. 20 years back, all of us did not have phones. I mean, I myself was given a phone only when I got into college. Today, I mean, when you're in second grade, you probably have a phone and an iPad and you're playing around with that and you're on social media. So that's what's changed over the past 10, 20 years. And both on the consumer side, which is you, know, you going out and buying consumer products like phones and tablets and computers to the industrial side, which is setting up things like Internet of Things devices, smart connected devices and so on you will see that there has been a revolutionary change in the amount of consumer devices or devices that are connected to the internet generating data. It's grown massively over the past five years. Now, the reason it has grown and one of the primary reasons why industry started adopting the use of technology is because the cost came down. Be it the cost of technology, be it the cost of data storage, everything came down from $100,000 you know, back in nine, the 1980s per gigabyte of data to today, it's about $0.01 per gigabyte of data. Now, imagine you wanting to store an HD movie in the 1980s. It would have probably cost you a few hundred thousand dollars. Today, you might probably be paying four cents or less than four cents to store that. So that's the difference of adoption. And that's the difference why industry started adopting this. And the major driving factor was that interest started peaking up. You know, over the past 10 years, when all these big companies started talking about artificial intelligence, this robots started coming out, you see different things on television. People started talking about data science, machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and the trends went significantly up. So you see from the past 10 years to today, the trends of what people searched for and looked for has gone up significantly. Now, imagine that you know you are a change maker in your organization. Let's for a few minutes put ourselves in the shoe of a sales head of an organization so that you all can get some perspective of what data science is all about. And your management team has come and give you a task that, hey, Mr. Sales Head, your job is to boost the sales in the next quarter, right? What are you gonna do? You say, hey, you know, I'm gonna use data science and I'm gonna try to figure out what the data is telling me and what I can do to boost the sales. So what are behind the scenes of data science? What happens behind the scenes? That's what we gotta look at. What as a sales head are you gonna do? Right. You're not going to say, hey, you know, you're my junior. Go and do this. That's not what you're, that's not what you're going to say. You're going to employ a process. Now, that process is what we call a data workflow or a data science workflow. Right. Now we are trying to open the box. Any business problem or any problem that is given to you always starts by you trying to come up with the business hypothesis or the business case, right? So in our case, the business case that we want to form is that we want to improve the sales in the next quarter. Post that, you will take data, you will collect data from wherever you can get it and send it to the refinery, right? That's where your data starts getting prepared. It starts getting refined. That's going to take a major chunk of your time. And then beyond that is where you would go and analyze, interpret, and communicate your data. So this workflow is very, very important. And this is what happens behind the scenes of data science between the input and the output you see. So if you look at each of the individual steps, the first step, which I call step zero, is to define your hypothesis, your business case, your questions. And Probably in this case, as a sales head, your business questions could be, hey, can I predict the sales for the next quarter, right? It could be, can I predict the customer churn? 
you know what customers are buying from me what customers are leaving they're not buying from me those could be how i can boost my sales by answering some of these questions what do you do post that post that you need some data right where are you going to get data from you're going to get data from various sources you're going to go to your customer crm systems you're going to get data from there you will probably go to your pos systems or your sales systems you will get some data from there you will probably go to your erp systems get some data from there you put all this data together prepare it make it ready for analysis and post that is when you're going to explore and prepare the data right now exploration and preparation is a very very important step of data science because this is where you would aggregate your data this is where you would eliminate data that you don't need put things together and most importantly you would analyze data effectively beyond this right once you say hey i am done with some part of my analysis what else can i do that's when you say hey you know what i'm going to go one level beyond and i'm going to start doing something called predictive analysis trying to figure out hey what's going to happen in the future that's what i'm going to try and do so in order to do that that's when the methods of artificial intelligence machine learning come into the picture at the end of it all the most important thing is to deliver or communicate the message right you would have figured out how to do it but if you can't communicate it's of no use so communicating the message is very very important that's where we come across this term called data analytics and visualization now if you remember step 2 where we said hey you know what once we clean up the data we're going to do analysis we're going to build models we're going to communicate all this comes under a branch of data science called data analytics and visualization and this is what you hear a lot you know now what is data analytics right we we all hear analytics this analytics that what's it all about now if you look at a wikipedia definition data analytics is going to tell you hey it's about finding meaningful patterns it's about discovering your data it's about interpreting your data and at the end of it all it's about effective decision making that's what analytics is kind of majorly used for the question is is analytics new didn't we know it 30 years ago didn't we know it 20 years ago we absolutely did just that the term analytics was not very popular what was popular was the term reporting was terms like statistics were terms like business process management business reports and that's what changed over the past 20 years the terminology the way things were looked at now when things first started with statistics and business process management people were content or people used to ask questions like hey you know i have data can we from the data figure out what happened in the past quarter right people never said what is going to happen in the next quarter people said what happened in the last quarter let's try and figure out now as time went by people started asking questions like hey why did something happen right so that started becoming more popular now that we know the what people start asking the why and we all know humans are curious beings we never stop at asking questions so after a period of time when technology started evolving and we had tools to do things like predictive analysis machine learning people started asking about the future hey what's going to happen next can i predict sales for next quarter the next year and beyond that once you can do that you can optimize your situation you can optimize how you're going to do things in the future so as much as analytics is not new the capabilities that analytics has brought about over the past few decades has certainly improved the productivity 
of an individual, of a business, of an organization. Now, people think that, you know, analytics is a very standalone subject or it's something very simple. But what they often forget is that when we talk about analytics, it consists of two very important branches of data science. Right? One is called data visualization. One is called data storytelling. And this is one of the most important things that you know I tell people. Right? Now, if you break down each of these branches of analytics or of data science, what does it mean? Right? And I'm going to do this through a very simple activity. Right now, I want all of you to do this activity in your head and think about the answer of the activities in your heads. Right now, on the subsequent slide, what would be shown to you is a grid of numbers. And your job to think in your head is how many nines are there on the grid in five seconds. Right, that's the job you're going to think about. And once you think about it, just repeat the number in your mind, right? And that's five seconds, right? Now time flies very fast. And I'm pretty sure that all of you try to calculate or try to count very rapidly in your head. You know, where are the nines? Where are the nines? Uh, now, some of you might say seven, some of you might say five, some of you might say six, eight, nine. You're all gonna have very diverse answers for this. Now, I'm going to show you the same thing in a different manner. And I'll give you the same five seconds to count in your head how many nines you see in the grid, right? So try to see the next slide and try to count in your head again. I'm pretty sure now that most of you would have counted there are eight nines on that particular grid. And you are absolutely right. There are indeed eight nines on that particular grid. Is that magic? What happened, right? How did you count better the second time around? That's data visualization, right? A very, very important aspect of analytics and data science, whose main job is to make decision making and things easier for you to look at and see. And you saw the major difference in one very small thing I showed you. Now imagine you would be able to do this at an organizational level or for data in general. Right. Data visualization comes in various forms, right? It could be something very simple like I just showed you. It could be something very complex where you're trying to answer different questions like how to go from one point to the other. You know, what is my sales? How was my sales over the past few months? How many transactions happened over the past few years? So when you're trying to answer these questions, you're using various forms of visualization to represent that. Now, if I give you another example, imagine that you're using Google Maps to figure out, hey, how do I go from one spot to another spot, right? And Google Maps gives you two ways to look at that, right? The first way is it shows your map, it puts you as a dot, it shows you the destination, and it shows you the route of how to go from one place to the other. The second way is it gives you step-by-step -step instructions on how to get from one place to the other. Which one do you often use? You often use the map because you can see. And if you use a step-by-step -step instructions, you might get confused and not end up at the right location. So that is the difference in what visualization can bring about. That's the first aspect. The second aspect is storytelling. And Storytelling is something I often enjoy with people because this is what makes things more memorable, impactful, and efficient, right? Now, go back a few years when you were a kid, right? When you were small, maybe three years or four years old. Your parents, your teachers would often tell you stories of maybe the hare and the tortoise, Jungle Book, and various others, right? You would see cartoon shows, and so on. And after 20 years, if I ask you, you'll say, hey, yeah, I remember that. I've seen it and I know the story. 
Why is that? But if I ask you, hey, yesterday, what did you present at your workplace? You might not. The reason is because stories make things more memorable, right? So storytelling is that art where you connect with people, where you tell them, hey, this is what the data is telling you, but in the form of a story that you've crafted, right? So that it connects with them. And when you talk about storytelling in general, the main idea is to ensure that things are meaningful. You are simplifying the business objective. You're simplifying the way you are conveying your message. You are trying to sell something, right? You know, which is why when you often come across good salespeople, they will tell you, hey, you know, five years back, this person bought this investment. Um, they tell you a story and then you know, you'll be like, wow, okay, that made a difference. Maybe I should buy it too. That's the, that's the major difference of how a story can sell. And then at the end of the day, you can crystallize your takeaways via these stories. The question is, uh, does everything you do convey meaning? Does everything you do always look great and mean the same thing? Probably not. Some visuals you do might look great. Some visuals you do might not. And your job, when you learn data science or when you go into the field, is to know how to make them look stunning, right? So if I take you through a few slides of what looks good and what doesn't, you can immediately make out that, hey, you know, this looks so ugly, right? This doesn't look good at all. Why? Because I can't uncover any meaning. If you look at this, it's like, hey, what is this? Or this, you'll be like, hey, why are there so many things on the screen? I don't know where to look. And imagine that this is from a live news channel. So your objective, once you do data visualization and storytelling, is to make sure that you're able to craft your underlying message about the data efficiently. So these are branches of data analytics, which help you make that more efficient. Now, the objective for an individual, the objective for an organization or business is to translate data via analytics into insights and further take some action on that. If your data doesn't translate into action, I mean, it means that you're just doing it without actually it creating an impact on the organization, right? Or on your business objective. Now, what are insights? Insights are nothing but value or meanings that you derive once you look at data, right? It's something that can be translated in the future into some tangible action, into something which can make a difference, right? It helps you improve your business. It helps you improve the process that you are trying to improve. And that's why deriving these insights via analytics is very, very important. I'll give you an example from something that you know you all relate to very well. And that example is from Netflix, right? So I'm sure a lot of you here watch Netflix or some streaming service where you involve yourself in watching movies and TV shows, right? Now, Netflix, when it was first launched, they did a study of their customers to find out how they were using the platform, what they were watching, how much they were watching, and so on, right? And they said, okay, let me take a bunch of customers, a bunch of my users, and let me study their data and try to figure out what people are doing. And you know, they very conveniently found out that when people are watching TV shows or movies or videos, that they're kind of watching only 90 to 95% of the whole thing. They're not seeing the whole video to its entirety. And I'm sure at this point, all of you are kind of sniggering to yourself saying, hey, that's me, right? Now, this was the finding. Now, they had to translate this into some value, right? To derive some insights they figured out that the five to 10% that people were not watching 
were basically the title role at the start and the credits at the end. And again, you're saying to yourself, that's me. Now, what did they do? They introduced something very, very efficient, which you can't wait to press. Right? They introduced a skip intro button. They introduced a next episode button. And these are things that you very conveniently use today in order to move through the segments that you don't want to watch. And, and that's what analytics and data science put together brought about, right? So Netflix used this particular tool to their advantage in order to bring about a change. And this change brought about a very, very big impact on the users because they're very happy and they were very conveniently using this. So that's what data science, analytics, visualization, and storytelling tell you. That's what they entail. That's what it's all about. But if you look at you know, data science and what people need or expect from data science, this particular chart called the data science hierarchy of needs tells you what all those things are. Right from the bottom of the, the, the hierarchy of needs or the pyramid, where some of the things involve data collection, data storage, data exploration, and so on, up to data analytics, was what we saw up till now. But we see that this is only halfway towards the top of the pyramid. People still want more from data science. They want to extract more value. Now this value that they want to extract comes in the form of experimentation, machine learning, artificial intelligence, deep learning, and so on. Technologies which are kind of revolutionizing analytics, taking it to a whole new level of predictive analytics, predict prescriptive analytics, cognitive analytics, and so on. Things where you know, you're trying to future-proof your business scenario. Now, based on this hierarchy of needs, artificial intelligence was born, right? People required it, people made it happen. Now, when we hear about artificial intelligence, we see artificial intelligence today all over newspapers, all over the news. We see how artificial intelligence is creating a difference in diagnostics, it's creating a difference in tourism, it's creating a difference in you know, software systems that you know, companies are building. And all these are different newspaper articles or you know, articles in general that have talked about AI, right? that AI can do this today, AI is used in you know, medical systems, it's used in the healthcare industry, it's being used in predictive analytics, the food industry, and so on. And I'm pretty sure all of you are reading about this you know, every single day. Now, if you see the image on my screen, this was one of the first mechanical systems built during the World War. Okay, which kind of laid the foundation for artificial intelligence as we know it today. So the history of this machine was that if you've seen the movie called The Imitation Game, this machine was used in order to crack an encrypted code. And this machine was able to successfully use that or do that and that's you know where the concept of intelligence was actually born saying hey you know what a machine can actually be intelligent enough to decrypt a code like hey maybe we can you know the scientists started thinking researchers started thinking maybe we can expand the scope of what can be done uh, to just beyond this machine and this was built by a famous person called alan turing uh, to break the enigma code right so Artificial intelligence has gone through a lot. Uh, and 
it was created in order to simulate human intelligence, to try to mimic how we think, and to kind of put this intelligence into machines so that they can do some of the tasks that we do, or even beyond some of the tasks that we do today. And the way artificial intelligence was imagined was that machines would use reasoning, cognitive abilities, learning that it you know, got from us and data in order to take some action, in order to fulfill a task. When we talk about the timeline of artificial intelligence, right? We have seen that artificial intelligence has evolved over the past 70 years or so, right? right after the World War. So 1950 was a time when you know, the Turing test came into effect. Right? Once Alan Turing built his machine, the Turing test came into effect. And basically, that was a test to compare a human and a machine. Right? Now, going from there onwards to where we are today, AI has seen a lot of different systems being built, used in different applications. You all must have heard about Deep Blue. You all must have heard about, you know, systems which beat Lee Sedol uh, in the famous game Go. You all must have heard about Eliza, the chatbot. And all of these things today have evolved into th you know, things we use in our daily life, things like Google Assistant, things like Siri, which came out in 2011. Uh, Alexa, which later came out in 2014, and so on, right? So artificial intelligence has evolved over the uh, past so many years, uh, owing to what we saw earlier, the improvement in technology, the reduction of costs, and human curiosity in general. Now, all of us have seen a lot of movies showing artificial intelligence capabilities, right? You know, we have seen movies like Her, we have seen movies like Ex Machina, we have seen, you know, a lot of movies, Star Wars, Star Trek, which may be showing you different levels of uh, AI. Some of them, or mostly all of them are fiction, but some of them are slowly starting to become a reality. Things where, you know, robots are doing tasks, things where machines are doing things that once could never have had happened. So all of that is becoming a reality now. And the reason why AI is important in organizations or important for you to know is because you can use it to help businesses evolve and derive more value from the data, right? That's how data science and AI now synergize with, you, with each other. So, if you talk about the cycle of AI and you kind of look at why AI is important, you will notice that you know AI is firstly helping reimagine the business processes and the business models. Today with AI, you're able to do much more than you were able to do manually a few years ago. The vastness of data doesn't allow us to manually figure out each and everything that the data can tell us. Artificial intelligence, helps us unlock this value from the data. And lastly, it was created as an aid to help humans with tasks that are repetitive, that machines could handle, so that humans can do things just beyond doing those same tasks again and again. Now, we often hear the terms machine learning, deep learning, artificial intelligence, and we get confused as to why, all, why are there so many terms? You know, what do they all mean? What do they all tell us? But if you look at a kind of a hierarchy or a breakdown of these terms, you will see that artificial intelligence is kind of like the umbrella under which you have machine and deep learning. And deep learning is a more specialized case of machine learning. Right? So artificial intelligence encompasses the techniques where machines can mimic humans. Machine learning is a subset of those techniques which enables technology to use statistical methods in order to help machines mimic humans to some extent or do things human can't. And deep learning, which is a further subset of machine learning, 
is basically using a brain like structure in order to do those same tasks right now the level of complexity started increasing the level of abstraction started increasing and machines were able to do a lot more but the question you know which uh, we majorly ask ourselves is why is analytics and machine learning required right why do we need this now we need analytics and machine learning or artificial intelligence because firstly as the years are progressing we are seeing a lack of human experts we are seeing that human experts are slowly and steadily declining right people want to stay at the surface level they don't want to dive deep secondly there are 7 billion plus people on the planet right and every one of us has a different expertise it is not possible that everyone's knowledge is combined and we know everything that is why machines were built in order to combine multiple people's expertise into a system so that it can do much more than just one human thirdly a rapidly changing environment right today we can see a rampant change across the whole world of how the world is evolving although the situation is a is a very sad one but in terms of a digital ecosystem in terms of how things have grown digitally using artificial intelligence and machine learning we have been able to utilize some of these technologies to adapt to some certain things in these trying times as well and lastly you know people started becoming very demanding in terms of uh, wanting things very personalized and customized and you know that's when systems were born to customize things for them so today when you log on to any streaming service any e-commerce website you will see that things are kind of personalized for you things you like come up at the top things you don't like are hidden from you that's only being possible because machines are learning about you using artificial intelligence and machine learning methods and are able to bring to you these customizations now we know that ai and data science is kind of omnipresent around us today but i would like to cite a few examples of you know where this is used in general where do you see it being used today right now all of us know what these are these are very popular devices today that are connecting us to a virtual world right so things like you know echo dot things like alexa things like google home all these are virtual assistants which talk to us when required they follow instructions they give us information and how is this all made possible this is made possible because artificial intelligence has enabled these systems to understand you once they understand you and comprehend what you're saying to gather the information to give you back through various sources of data and in an artificial voice which is starting to sound like a human every day as we progress tells you or gives you a reply now i not sure how many of you have seen this but google maps has the capability to you know in real time show you directions in real time to tell you how much time it takes in real time to give you traffic information and so on and the key driver behind this is the data which is gathering through various sources and it's able to tell you in real time what the situation is like if we talk about things more closer to you right imagine your phone right now your phone has face unlock your phone has a fingerprint unlock now the first time you you know buy a new phone it asks you to register your fingerprint right and it tells you hey can you move your finger like this you know use the side of your thumb uh repeated a few times what do you think it's doing it's not having fun right 
it's basically trying to learn and kind of figure out how your fingerprint looks like so that the next time you're trying to log in, it's your finger and not somebody else's, which is able to unlock your phone. So it learns and memorizes the pattern, right? That's how artificial intelligence and machine learning has evolved into you know, everyday things around us. In terms of face unlock as well, it sees your face, it tells you, can you move your face left, right? And it learns about it, right? If you talk about different sectors of the industry, right? Telecom industry has seen a lot of uh, data science and AI being used. How do they use it? Firstly, they use it for customer segmentation and marketing. If you've ever received a message on your phone saying your balance is low, please stop up for $10 and enjoy an extra 50 MB data on us. Do you think everybody might be getting the same message? Probably not, right? Because there's a machine which is sitting behind or an, or an, or an algorithm which is trained sitting behind telling us or indicating that, hey, he is a potential customer who is going to do this or who needs to do this. And it's giving us this offer to entice us to, to the recharge. And we get enticed by that offer and then we would go ahead and do it. Maybe a different person would get a different message. You know, let's say somebody has not made a call for a very long time. That person would probably get a message saying, hey, you know, recharge today and enjoy 100 minutes of free calling. So these are the things which uh, people often get to see on their phone. Another area where the telecom sector is kind of very big is in the area of uh, network optimization, right? Now, we often hear a lot of, um, sorry about that. We often hear a lot of uh, news coming out today that, hey, Google's network is down. Uh, some XYZ mobile operator network is down. We're not getting enough, enough speed. Telecom companies are constantly using AI to flag out um, where there could be faults. How could I optimize my network to be better, right? And that's basically how telecom industries are using machine learning and artificial intelligence to make sure all of us get sustainable service, right? Other such use cases of data science and AI in the telecom sector include things like customer service chatbots. And this is not only in telecom, but extends across different industries. Today, the first thing when you go to customer service through the website or through uh, a phone call could be you encountering a bot asking you, hey, what's your problem? It will try to solve your problem as much as possible. Now, as much as you think this is an easy thing to do, it probably is not because it involves a lot of data, a lot of different situations of what you might ask. Machine learning involving technologies like natural language processing to enable a bot to reply you with an optimal answer. Right? That's why it's not that easy. You have speech and voice services, uh, which allow customers to you know, control things. Right? There is predictive maintenance, which, you know, as I was talking about earlier, tells uh, an operator that, hey, you know, it probably looks like this line might go down. Maybe you want to have a look at it. And that is enabled by an immense amount of data being trained with indicators and parameters of what would cause an outage or what would cause a system to go down. If you talk about the manufacturing or the mechanical sector of things, uh, data science and machines, and we talk about machines, we're talking about industrial machines, have uh, evolved a lot using some of these technologies of AI. Now, if you've looked at uh, Tesla and you've seen their assembly process, if you've looked at, uh, you know, other such manufacturers and looked at their assembly processes. A lot of those assembly processes are now being controlled by machines. Some of the machines 
use techniques of AI to do things right, to optimize things, right? And this is how it's taking over, you know, the manufacturing sector. Secondly, with machines, you're able to, you know, like in the telecom sector, be able to figure out, hey, is my machine going to go down, right? What are the probability of components starting to become more defective, right? And it's able to do this with the help of different indicators and give it out to you in the in some form of view, which a user is able to see and make out very efficiently, right? And that's what we call being able to predict machine failures, right? So this is a very important part because you know for manufacturing firms where machines are the key money-making instruments, if a machine goes down, that means there's a long wait time till it gets back up because it has to be repaired. There has to be a technical team which comes in and does stuff. Now, by you utilizing this uh, technology available to you in terms of AI or ML, you would be able to predict sooner that, hey, there is a probability this breaks down. So before it breaks down, a technical team can have a look at it. And that cuts down the amount of time uh, or that cuts down the time that it would normally take when it breaks down, right? So it's more like preventing something from happening. Now, data science is used in a lot, in a lot of different use cases. And, uh, you know, you can think about a lot of different cases in your head. Uh, things like, hey, predicting the weather, right? Things like predicting whether to give you a loan or not. Things like predicting a customer card, sorry, credit card fraud situation. All these are more common scenarios that any industrialist or any person working in the business or industry would probably come across. Now, in general, when we talk about data analytics and artificial intelligence, it has penetrated every single industry that we know, be it the travel and tourism industry, which although is hit very hard, people are finding alternate ways of doing this by innovation. The marketing department or the marketing industry is where marketing industries are trying to use analytics and AI to sell products to people. Right. You buy something, they tell you, hey, you know, you can buy this also or go and buy this. I'm going to give it to you at a reduced price. I bundle it together and you're going to have a lower price overall. If you talk about marketing in the insurance industry or the financial industry, people often call you saying, hey, do you want to buy credit card? Do you want to buy insurance? And, you know, you would often say, no, thank you and keep the phone down. Now. The reason they know that they're going to give you a call is because some system is telling them that, hey, you know, he is probably a prospect, right? So maybe out of a hundred people they call, maybe 20 might actually go forward with what they're offering. So this is what AI can, or analytics and AI put together can do in this particular marketing segment. When we talk about healthcare, uh, healthcare, things have grown a lot in the area of imaging diagnostics in the area of predicting diseases in the area of you know medical effectiveness or medication effectiveness things have uh, evolved although it's a very challenging sector because in healthcare things are very critical uh, a lot of countries with evolution of technology and networks have been able to achieve a lot of things social media we all know all right because we use social media a lot, primarily digital marketing. You know, you probably go browse something on Google the next minute you open Facebook and you're actually seeing an ad related to what you just searched for. Now it might be scary, but there are systems continuously in real time trying to monitor what's happening, what you're doing and put these ads out to you. You type things on social media, somebody's doing sentiment analysis, right? You, you type something about a political agenda, maybe you know the next day you get a message saying, hey, stop doing that. Now, 
probably people are figuring out whether your comments are positive, negative, and they're trying to reach out to you, right? Sales, there's no need to talk about because sales is something where every single organization who has a department is doing something like demand forecasting. They're trying to predict what the demand could be, what the sales is going to be, what the profitability is, what discounts to offer. When you have a sale on Lazada or Shopee and you know, you see the five, five, the six, six, the nine, nines coming up. How does a system, you know, put things on, on sale? And right? when does the system put things on sale? All these things are being controlled by analytics and AI today, right? It's not somebody manually sitting down and pressing a button every single time. If we talk about automation, if we talk about the manufacturing sector, we are seeing evolution of things like self-driving cars, you're seeing evolution of you know, drones, pilotless aircrafts, all only through the evolution of AI. And especially if you're following Tesla and, and other such companies, you'll be seeing this on and off in the news. And lastly, if you talk about credit and insurance, then being able to avoid the risk of fraud, being able to predict what something might claim, uh, trying to make sure that your claim is not a fraudulent one. All these things are very, very important from that in industry perspective. So, you know, these are the, the segments where it's penetrated and this is not even an exhaustive list. This is just a very, very high level list of things that, you know, one might generally see, right? Now, the question is, I've talked a lot about data science and AI in general. I've opened the box around what exactly happens and, and why it's necessary. What are some of the tools that are available in this space that you can learn or are utilized by industries today to make this happen? We see a lot of different programming tools like Python, Java, R, you know, .NET, and Go and others being utilized to do analytics being utilized to code artificial intelligence programs. There are a lot of other tools in the market like Tableau, Power BI, SAS, Oracle, which are used for other things like data analytics, data storage, and data science in general, where we are doing things on the lower half of the hierarchy of needs, collecting, storing, preparing. So in terms of tools, there are a lot of different tools out there. And you can use tools like Power BI to create you know, these beautiful reports to communicate analytics information to people. For example, you know this is a, a report which talks about product sales. And you can easily see where products have been sold, what products have sold, you know, what's your monthly revenue like, have your orders gone down or not so at the blink of an eye you can actually see all these things very very efficiently uh, when we talk about uh, you know other things where you know healthcare comes into the picture how does healthcare affect the happiness index of a particular country the gdp of a particular country then tools like tableau power bi can help you look at you know the data very very visually very very efficiently in order to uh, make sure that the right information is being conveyed to the right people. Now, if you talk about the other side of the spectrum, right, where artificial intelligence, computer vision comes into play, a lot of examples involve emotion detection, right? So we're all sitting in an online class. How do I know somebody's listening or not? How do I know somebody is actually paying attention? So being able to gauge somebody's emotion, attentiveness, is the way to determine classroom engagement. And, and that's something which tools like Python, machine and deep learning enable you to do. Similarly, you know, if you have autonomous vehicles and they are looking at road signs, they need to be able to determine what a particular road sign is. So machine learning and deep learning can learn this so that an, a driverless car can actually recognize different signs of the road like you see here in the in the image 
Now, all of these things involve some level of programming, some level or some knowledge of the tool itself in order to bring about or create this system, right? The difference between the past 20 years or what was there 20 years back and what's there today is that the tools have become slightly easier to use. The, tech, the methodology has become slightly or much more easier to learn. Availability is more prominent. And that's why industries, that's why individuals like all of you are able to take this and create it, right? Now, the question you need to ask yourself is, you know, how is data science important for me? Or is data science important for me in the first place? Right? How do I get into it? How, what am I supposed to learn to utilize or create a difference in the industry? So firstly, data science or data analytics or machine learning is something that every industry requires today. Now, maybe 20 years back, this was not the case. 20 years back, a lot more managers were required, a lot more people who could manage other people, who could manage systems were required. Today, you need more of the, the engineers, the data science engineers, the machine learning engineers, the analysts. And if you see this uh, you know, graph here, that shows you that the, the value of these people have increased a lot. So you see your know, computer vision people, your data scientists, your machine learning engineers have all been kind of bumped up to the top of the list, right? And if you compare this to earlier years, you will notice that they were significantly in the lower half of that spectrum. Secondly, you know, the amount of growth in, in jobs across the world points to the fact that every industry requires these people to bring about a change in systems to de develop these systems to incorporate the use of data science into the industry so the percentage growth of you know the requirement of data science and ai is correlated to what companies want right if if a company is hiring 50 data scientists it means that they are embarking on that digital transformation journey they want to utilize data science and ai to do something right so you will see that again on the on the top of this particular you know column chart that you see on the screen, machine learning people, your data scientists, your uh, you know other data analysts uh, have grown a lot in there in terms of their demand. Now, when you talk about data science and AI, not everybody knows everything, or not everybody needs to know everything, right? If you are a person who likes data a lot and your primary role would involve cleaning data would involve or you would like to do that transformation of data preparing data you know you would like to be the refinery of the of raw data then those people are the data engineers without the data engineers the data is like raw unrefined oil you can't do anything with it so these are very important people in an organization that's why they're also one of the most highly sought after people. On the right side of this particular diagram, you have the data scientists. Those are the people who work together with the data engineers who say, okay, you've given me the, the data in a refined form. I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna apply analytics, AI on top of this for a particular business scenario. A very important part of data science and AI is the know-how of the business, right? Business domain knowledge is very, very important. You cannot say, I know how to do Python programming, so I know AI. That's not how it works. So you always need support of the business stakeholders or you know, people from the business to tell you about what kind of business decisions are gonna help drive the organization to become more effective, right? And these people work together to bring about a change, to bring about a valuable action, to bring about some, uh, you know, 
digital scope to the company or the organization. Right? These are the people who work together to do that. So as a person who is in the data field or who wants to go into the data field, you have to choose which spectrum you want to be in, right? And all of them are equally important for any organization. So if you choose, for example, to be a data scientist, and this is just one example which I'm giving you, what would be some of your responsibilities in an organization, right? Because a part of demystifying data science is to demystify a data scientist. So a data scientist's day-to-day -day role typically entails things like business analysis, right? You being able to advise stakeholders on, hey, what am I supposed to do to make value from this data? You are the person who is bringing about the technical delivery or the technical solutions using programming languages, using various tools. And you're the person doing the reporting or communicating, interpreting all these value adds that you bring about. And typically, that's your day-to-day -day task, right? As a data scientist, your day-to-day -day task will be that. Now, similarly, data engineers, business analysts, or stakeholders would have their own day-to-day -day tasks as well. And that's just demystifying one side of the, uh, of the scope. I'll leave the rest up to you to figure out, you know, how a data engineer adds value, what is their day-to-day -day scope, how a machine learning engineer adds value, how a business stakeholder adds value. And, you know, you can take that back as a post-session activity for you to kind of figure out and, and know where you want to fit into. Now, just coming towards the, the end of my presentation, uh, I want to talk about what the landscape of the industry is today. And when we talk about demystifying data science and AI, is it that it's all talk or is it that industries are actually adopting this today? That's the main thing we got to look at. So if we talk about the industry, right? Analytics usage over the past few years, and these stats come from a few years back, is that between 2015 and 2017, right? The growth of people adopting analytics went from 17 to 53%. And that's just increased over the past few years. And this is from a Forbes article, right? These are facts which have been extracted from a Forbes article. Secondly, you know, my, from a MicroStrategy article uh, or their report, MicroStrategy is another organization who does a lot of uh, analytics tools. You know, they've said that about 90% of professionals, professionals who work in the enterprise and the business, they say that analytics has been a key driver of digital transformation. Data science has been a key driver of digital transformation. And people who have learned data science are bringing about that change, right? They have identified things that can make business processes more efficient. And an article uh, from McKinsey, right? McKinsey Global Institute, they say that data-driven organizations are 23 times more likely to acquire customers and are more likely to retain customers as well. And this is absolutely true. We talked about in some of the use cases earlier, how you can do customer segmentation, how you can predict customer churn. All these things are what, you know, allows a company to be data first or forward data thinking, right? And at, by 2020, and, and you know, this is what happened last year, uh, there was about two and a half million jobs for data science and analytics across the world and more. I mean, these figures are not actual figures, but they were just an estimate. We've seen a lot of growth in the amount of people that are getting into this. You've seen a lot of growth in the amount of industries that are getting into this, right? And, and that's why I personally have a passion because things are changing so rapidly that it's fun to kind of keep updating yourself with what's happening 
in and around the world today right and i think just to summarize you know what i want to say when we demystify when you open pandora's box you know data science and ai is a very complex entity by itself right so when you when you hear artificial intelligence you would wonder always you know what's what's actually happening and you would only know what's happening when you break the term down into its constituent components you know we, we said analytics we said visualization we said machine learning we said deep learning these are various components of data science and ai and you need to understand how all these different components work in order to get a feeling of hey okay this is what data science and ai is all about and you can only do that when you take on a task learn the language learn the tool and utilize that efficiently on some data so always know that data science and ai is a very broad field but a very very interesting one to be in because every organization today is utilizing data and every organization in the future will be utilizing data to derive value and to drive the organization forward and i think with that uh, you know i would like to uh, end my talk and i would like to thank all of you for listening to me and i want to open the floor now for any questions that you may have thank you so much hi guys guys do you have any questions if you have any questions feel free and ask our guest speaker the wonderful speaker who has spent the time almost more than 1 hour 10 minutes and we really appreciate on behalf of our asia pacific university to mr aditya and guys those who have queries those who have any doubts whatever it may be now it's a time for you to ask all right so soon philip so mr aditya soon philip he asked here advice that what advice would you provide for students who would like to build a career in the data science field all right i think i think that's a very interesting uh, uh, question i i often get now <clears throat> as a student right uh, irrespective of whichever branch of uh, you know study that you're in there would be certain things which allow you to learn computer systems right now your first step from that is to develop those skills in the direction of hey how can computer systems be utilized in the field of analytics now either you do that via going the programming path where you say okay i have some knowledge of programming or i have an avid interest in programming i want to start picking up python i want to start picking up r as a programming language now that's your first step into knowing the base behind analytics and knowing the base behind how you can in the future go about doing ml so today there are a lot of resources available uh, to pick up basic python programming to pick up r programming and utilize them in certain use cases which you know involve data and that should be your first step to learn the tool behind uh, data science and ai now if you go the route where you say hey you know my analytics should involve visualization and i want to learn how to you know, be a a business professional and be able to tell the story of the data i would advise you to learn tools which are more on the business intelligence side you know things tools like power bi tools like tableau which don't require you to know programming you know maybe you don't like programming but stir your mind to think about the business more and to derive value from the data in the form of more visualizations and stories right so you have two paths to go to and one is the business intelligence path one is the programming and analytics and ai path now you got to choose where you want to go right and based on that you would start by developing your knowledge on the tool further you would develop your knowledge using 
data and a lot of different use cases. And that's how you would start getting into data science. Once you are able to exhibit some knowledge, uh, you should start taking part in, uh, not taking part, rather utilize resources such as HackerRank, LeetCode to further your skills uh, in these areas, and then slowly start going into you know, Kegel use cases and competitions to actually know how you can utilize some real data to create a difference. And, and that will make you very competent uh, to get into the industry as well. So that's the channel I would advise all students to take. Uh, based on your area of interest. Thank you, Mr. Aditya, for answering the wonderful questions. And also, you have given your prominent advices to our students, okay, to our Brian Chung and Ivan Milikan Rai. So, also, I would like to highlight some of the points that you have shared. I really appreciate that word that you have shown in the slide. I like the term, which is called as the data is the new oil. All right, really, really it attracted. Also, it uh, really touched our heart because nowadays the data is the new oil. So wherever we go, we used to follow the data, right? So even this pandemic situations also, whenever we go to any shopping also, we have to. So in Malaysia here, we have to use the My Sajatra. And some places we used to write manually. We used to provide the data, right? So what, what we you have said, we really agree it. And also you have explained us the artificial intelligence is an umbrella and also you have defined very clearly and also in detail with the very good terms called as a data data analytics and a data visualizations and so on and uh, the key point here i would like to highlight is the hierarchy the data analysis the data analytics so the hierarchy of needs so you have explained about the learning and also the aggregate the third step will be uh, explorations then move collect and so on uh, we really appreciate i believe all our students they have understood very well and you also given some real-time scenarios with uh, some examples really so you have highlighted about the tesla and the data science with the a tools what are the tools that the industries can be used utilized and how the analytics could be taking place and so on really appreciate um, mr aditya right and uh, i would like to ask one more question could you please open a place for our students to have internship in your premise, in your company? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, we, we always, uh, you know, welcome, you know, students who show an avid interest in learning, who, you know, want to enhance their skills, uh, you know, and, and, and who want to get into artificial intelligence. We, we always, you know, have a place to, you know, a learning avenue for them, a learning path for them, uh, you know, help them with, you know, various uh, projects, real-time scenarios, and we'd be happy to extend uh, that to, you know, everybody here as well, and, and try to help as many people as possible to get into this. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mr. Aditya. And last question for our today's session before we end our broadcast. So what is your opinion in writing blogs relating to data science and contribute our understanding to the field? Yeah, I think uh, writing blogs is uh, something which I encourage uh, a lot of my trainees and learners to do uh, because, you know, today uh, all of us know that sharing knowledge is how we learn. Right. We read other people's blogs, other people read our blogs, and that's how we learn. And blogs basically symbolize, uh, you know, we transferring our knowledge of what we have learned to the community. So I always encourage people, you know, hey, you know, you've done a use case, you've utilized certain tools, uh, spend a day or two writing about it on channels such as Towards Data Science, Medium, all these, or LinkedIn even, uh, to, you know, not only show people and industry professionals that you know the topic, but also to help the community. So that's that's something which everybody should definitely do. Very good. That's great. Really appreciate. And the last question: Any other platforms like hackers that is called like Hacker Rank that are preferred and suggested? Yeah. So there are quite a few platforms. Uh, Hacker Rank is one avenue to, you know improve your skills in various different uh, tools like SQL, 
Python and so on. You have tools like LeetCode, uh, you have Kegel, and many other such avenues where you know one could utilize data to either improve their Python skills, machine learning skills, to take part in competitions. Uh, and one of the things I would suggest you know students to generally do is you know we have a lot of uh, hackathons ha which happen globally. Uh, you know either hosted by organizations or either hosted by other universities which have problem statements with data backing that up. And I would encourage everybody to take part in that, to you know, get a feel of how it is you know, to actually utilize data and derive something useful. I think that's very interesting to do as well. Okay, very good. Thank you so much for the wonderful answers that you have provided. And I believe that answers are fulfilled our expected requirements. And soon, Philip also asked a question, maybe a block platform suggestion as well. Is there is anything? Yeah, so uh, two black block platforms, which I suggested earlier, uh, towards data science is a very prominent one for data science enthusiasts who want to post. There's another one called Medium, which uh, is very helpful as well. And you could use uh, LinkedIn posts, which will showcase uh, you know what you have done to other industry professionals so these three can be utilized efficiently for uh, blogging very good thank you mr aditya so thanks to you once again for the wonderful okay deliverance on the wonderful topic related to the demystifying data science and artificial intelligence so on behalf of our apu and also the centers that what we are we have been running in our APU, which is called as Asia Pacific Center for Data Analytics. We really appreciate you once again, and we welcome you in future for giving more talk on this. Thank you once again, Mr. Aditya. Thank you Absolutely. guys for participating. Thank you, everyone.